I'm Danny Menkin, the writer-director of On The Map. How did you come to produce an English-language Israeli documentary movie? So uh, it started uh, by me making a film about uh, the amazing 1977 uh, victory of the Maccabi Tel Aviv basketball team, what we call the miracle on hardwood versus the miracle on ice that everybody knows about. And then um, when I came to the United States with my previous fiction film, I told people about this story and they said, oh, you know, we know about the miracle on ice, but we never heard about this story of the 1977 basketball team. And then I decided to make, a, with Nancy Spielberg and Roberta Grossman, to make a film about the American players that came to Israel in 1977 and put Israel on the map. What was the genesis? How did it start? It started uh, with the uh, Israeli TV. I was talking to one of the executives there that happened to be the daughter of the coach, Renat Klein, a great, wonderful producer and a great creative force behind this project. And she came to me and she said, you know, Danny, uh, when we just spoke about it, we spoke about her father. We both adored her father. And we said, how come there was no movie about it? For us, on the map is like, for the American, the first step on the moon. No, it's like the first stop on the moon. It's like, for us, even Tal Brody said, we are on the map is everything changed. Establishing national pride. Uh, it, International we, recognition. We, yeah, he said something that everybody uh, believed in at that moment, but nobody could say it. Just right. A, right. A, an American born player that gave up on the NBA, came to Israel, and with a broken Hebrew said a slogan that became the 11th commandment. So this, this team won 1977. What year were you born? I was seven years old. Uh -huh. And it's one of my first childhood memories. My father lifts me up, you know, and, and takes me on his shoulder. And we're going to the, you know, a municipality square. And then we hear that uh, Rabin resigned. So it's a day that you cannot forget. You know, the, the, there are those days that you cannot forget. That's one of them. So when people ask me, how long did I really work on this film? I said, literally, I worked four years, but I can say in some ways I worked on it for 40 years because since I really remember that story. So for people who haven't seen it yet, most you, people, we, right. we just came out. It was a previous screening. Nobody's seen it. Okay. How do you summarize what, what the, the film is about to you? It's about three things that I really love. It's film, basketball, and Israel. And that's what this film is all about. And I I think when people will see it in November, they will be able to see how the American players have seen Israel. And maybe in, in, in a one line, to summarize it, they can see uh, the team and the year that became kind of like the Forrest Gump of the history of Israel. Because everything happened that year. Everything happened. It's not only that the team won the Russians. Sorry, spoiler alert. <laughs> during the Cold War, when the Russians refused to play against them, everything happens, everything is surrounded there. It's four years after Yom Kippur, the peace process with Egypt, the Prime Minister resigned the day of the game, and Tebe, and, 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 and Moshe Dayan shaking their hands, like everything together in one story. And that's why I really enjoyed doing it, and that's why I really hope people that will come and see it, will support us, will come to our Facebook page on the map, and to our website, <laughs> hejudproductions.com, and we'll tell others that, you know, here it is. We have our own miracle on ice. We don't have ice, but we have miracles. <laughs> How do Israelis feel about the kind of reaction that their uh, soccer teams get playing in Europe? The kind of uh, protests and uh, chants that come uh, anti-Semitic or anti-Zionist chants against Israel. Is this something that Israelis are concerned about today? I think it motivates us and, and in some ways we don't see ourselves. And, 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 and I, I would speak even on my, on my behalf as a filmmaker, but I, 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 I grew up in a sport environment. So I know that every soccer player that plays now outside of Israel feels like he represents Israel. And 
and, and it's unique because, you know, um, everybody speaks about the Jewish mind and we created Spielberg and Einstein and Woody Allen and, and, and great things, but we were not known to be such great sport figures. And that changed. In 1977, it changed. So every time somebody is playing, somebody is succeeding, they feel like they represent not only themselves, not only their team, but they represent their country. But internationally today, Israel's not getting the kind of acclaim when they play. Even, I don't know, in, in basketball, are, are the uh, uh, arenas having trouble from protesters and things nowadays? But that hasn't changed. If you see, if you've seen the film that will come up in November, <laughs> yeah. uh, that was the Russians boycotting Israel and they didn't want to play against Israel because they are Israel. That happened 40 years ago. 40 years ago. 40 years ago. Yeah. Even still, are, are, are Israelis, Israeli athletes still facing challenges, social challenges, traveling and playing abroad? And that's why I think people can resonate to this film because in some ways, 40 years ago, so many has happened, but so many is still the same. What kind of uh, is a concern is there in the Israeli public about the, the treatment that European uh, uh, sports uh, arenas are giving to the Israeli, not just uh, players, sometimes to the coaches? In Britain, they have Israeli coach, uh, Manchester United, and, then they, and, and they have problems. Are Israelis concerned about this? I'll tell you what they're, they're mostly concerned about, about the victory, because that makes it much, more, much sweeter. <laughs> in other words, they're more concerned to win than in spite of the... I don't know if they're more concerned to win. I think it, make it makes it sweeter. You know, because there is nothing like beating these guys that don't want to play against you. They don't recognize you. Who are you? Who are you? You know, why will they even play against you? And then comes Tal Brody, who doesn't, you know, play in the NBA because he chooses to play in Israel. And, you know, five other American players who do, don't make it to the NBA with three Sabras in a country that never go to the second round and they beat the Russians. That makes it sweeter. You know, the fascinating thing that, I, that struck me about your picture was, of, oh, well, two things. First of all, that you got access to all that footage, that behind-the-scenes footage that, that, that wasn't uh, shown on sports TV, right? What was that? Where did that come from? Look, when you make a documentary about the team that you love and so many people in the country love, you need to find those things that nobody has seen. So I worked for a whole year with a big team to look for footage everywhere. We find rare footage in Luxembourg from private people and that's what made On The Map a live film. And we were fortunate, you know, to have Bill Walton, to have David Stern, you know, to have Digger Phelps, to have you know, really big basketball icons coming to support this story. And uh, that's what makes uh, On The Map, I believe, you know, a strong film. And I very, very impressive, very impressive to have David Stern and, and Digger Phelps. But Bill Walton seemed to have a connection to these players, to Tal and to this story that goes beyond... What was his connection? Was it just his friendship with Tal that he knows the story so intimately? Yes, it's a, it's a very special connection between Bill Walton and Tal Brody. Bill Walton was with Tal Brody in the American national team uh, during the Vietnam War. And in some ways, you know, he feels like he owns his career and his life to Tal Brody because uh, at that time they had a terrible coach. And he said to Bill Walton that he was 16 years old, a kid, that if he's not going to play good, he's going to go to the war. He's going to go to Vietnam with, with the, and, and he's going to be kicked out of the basketball team. And Tal Brody was the one that relaxed him and he feels like he owes a lot to Tal Brody. And look, Tal Brody is a quiet leader. You know, he's a leader, you know, everywhere you put it. He's just an incredible person, an incredible leader. And I'm, I'm very excited about touring with him with the film. Will be coming around with the film? Yes, absolutely. He's going to come with the film and we're going to talk about this story. Where, where will he be uh, uh, visiting in America? New York, LA, Chicago. And we're, we're, we're getting requests every day. We haven't even started and we've got more requests for more than any of my films so far. So, uh, yes, we're planning also to be in Miami. 
yes, also in Florida. Yeah, everywhere. We're, uh, we're going to be everywhere on the map because we want to show that we're on the map. So show us the map and we'll get there. <laughs> How about Aussie Perry? And when I was there in, in 1978, he was a household name. But in America, he's virtually unknown. Yeah. Uh, will, will he be appearing in connection with the picture? Absolutely. Absolutely. I can tell you that Aussie Perry is a fascinating story. I'm working on a separate film just about him, a fiction and documentary. And I'm very pri privileged to have known him. And his life story is beyond words. So he'll be appearing when people come to the Israel Film Festival? I know, I cannot promise that he will be here on the Israeli Film Festival. That's you have to ask Mayor, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> Mayor Fenigstein, uh -huh. <laughs> you know. Uh, so I would good. love to, I would love to, yes, yes, please. And if you want to sponsor us and help us bring Tal Brody, bring uh, uh, Ossie Perry, please do, you know, please, if you want to have your name in the film, please do, because we are, you know, a not-for-profit and, and the way we've done this film and the way we support our distribution is through donations. So. You just you just reminded me to to <laughs> to mention that you know to people and to everyone wants to sponsor because you know what not a lot of people in Hollywood you know love or support good films coming from Israel and I believe you know this is just a good basketball story regardless to Israel but the fact that it's also a positive story coming from Israel there's some added value to it. But outside of LA, New York, and uh, where the, the festival is seen, how will the general public be able to see this picture? The general public uh, will be able to see it in theaters, and hopefully later, you know, in digital, and uh, where we'll be happy to be picked up by TV. And, you know, uh, film is like a baby. It starts, you never know where it will get. You know, I, was the, I had the privilege of working in National Geographic, HBO, working with Disney, and... and, and um, many stations around the world I never knew when I released the film where it will go so it will go wherever there will be ball of eyes that will want to see it and we will be uh, happy to show it